August 17, 1976. Midnight. Along the coast of Mindanao, in the southern Philippines, thousands of people slept in their homes. Fishing villages lined the shores of Moro Gulf. No one expected what was coming. Twelve miles beneath the ocean floor, the Cotabato Trench suddenly ruptured. A magnitude 8.1 earthquake. The seafloor dropped by several meters in seconds, displacing billions of gallons of water. Five to ten minutes later, tsunami waves up to 30 feet high slammed into the coast. In the darkness, no one saw them coming. 8,000 people died that night. This is the Cotabato Trench, the deadliest fault line in the Philippines. And it could happen again. The Cotabato Trench runs along the southwestern coast of Mindanao, stretching from the Moro Gulf area down toward the Celebes Sea. It's part of the larger Philippine Trench System, a complex network of subduction zones that surrounds the entire Philippine archipelago. At the Cotabato Trench, the Sunda Plate is being forced beneath the Philippine Sea Plate at about 5 to 7 centimetres per year. That's slower than some subduction zones, but it's still building enormous pressure along the fault line. Most of the time, the plates are locked together, stuck, unable to move. Decades or even centuries can pass with no major activity. Then suddenly, catastrophically, they slip. When that happens, the seafloor doesn't move horizontally like it would along the San Andreas Fault. It moves vertically, dropping or rising by several meters in seconds. That vertical displacement is what creates tsunamis. And the Cotabato Trench sits dangerously close to one of the most populated regions in Mindanao. The 1976 Moro Gulf earthquake struck at 12.11 a.m. local time. Most people were asleep. There was no warning system, no tsunami sirens, no emergency broadcasts. The earthquake itself was devastating. Magnitude 8.1 is massive, powerful enough to shake the entire island of Mindanao. Buildings collapsed, infrastructure failed, but the shaking lasted only a few minutes. Then came the tsunami. Five to ten minutes after the earthquake, the first waves hit the coast. In some areas, the waves were 15 feet high. In others, they reached 30 feet. The water surged inland, destroying everything in its path. Entire villages were swept away. Wooden homes, fishing boats, schools, churches, all gone in minutes. People who survived the earthquake drowned in the waves. Families were separated. Bodies were carried out to sea. By morning, the scale of the disaster became clear. Over 8,000 people were dead. Thousands more were injured or missing. Entire communities had been wiped off the map. It remains one of the deadliest natural disasters in Philippine history. Scientists have studied the 1976 earthquake extensively. They've mapped the fault rupture, analyzed the tsunami propagation, and tried to understand why it was so deadly. Several factors made it catastrophic. First, the timing. Midnight. People were asleep. There was no chance to evacuate, even if anyone had known a tsunami was coming. Second, the proximity. The Cotabato Trench sits just offshore from heavily populated coastal areas. The tsunami hit in five to ten minutes. That's not enough time to run to high ground, even if you're awake and aware. Third, the lack of preparedness. In 1976, the Philippines had almost no tsunami warning infrastructure, no early detection buoys, no evacuation plans, no public education about what to do if the ground shakes near the coast. And fourth, the geography. The Moro Gulf area has low-lying coastal plains. When a tsunami hits, the water has nowhere to go but inland. It funnels up river valleys and floods everything for miles. 
Since 1976, the Philippines has improved its warning systems. FIVOLX, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, now monitors seismic activity and issues tsunami warnings. But the system is still incomplete, especially in Mindanao. And here's the terrifying part. Geological evidence suggests the Cotabato Trench produces major earthquakes every 50 to 100 years. It's been 49 years since 1976. Computer models show what would happen if another magnitude 8.00 plus earthquake struck the Cotabato Trench today. The scenario is similar to 1976, but worse because there are more people living along the coast now. Cities like General Santos, Davao Gulf communities, and coastal areas around Moro Gulf have grown significantly since the 1970s. What were small fishing villages are now towns and cities. Millions of people live in the potential impact zone. A magnitude 8.0 earthquake would generate tsunami waves similar to 1976, 15 to 30 feet high, hitting the coast in 5 to 15 minutes. Coastal communities would have almost no time to evacuate. Fivolx estimates that a repeat event could affect up to 5 million people across Mindanao and nearby islands. The death toll would depend entirely on warning systems and evacuation response. Unlike 1976, we now have technology. Tsunami warning buoys, seismic monitoring stations, mobile phone alerts. But technology only works if people know what to do with the warning. And in Mindanao, tsunami preparedness is still dangerously low. The Cotabato Trench doesn't get the attention that the Manila Trench or East Luzon Trench receive. It's in the southern Philippines, far from the capital. It affects Mindanao, which already deals with conflict, poverty and underdevelopment. But the Cotabato Trench has something the other trenches don't, a proven track record of mass casualties. The Manila Trench hasn't produced a major tsunami in living memory. The East Luzon Trench had earthquakes in the 1960s and 70s, but nothing like the 1976 Moro Gulf disaster. The Cotabato Trench killed 8,000 people in one night, and survivors are still alive to tell the story. Yet coastal development continues. People build homes right at sea level. Fishing communities cluster along vulnerable shorelines, and most residents have no idea what to do if the ground shakes. There's a cultural factor at play too. The 1976 disaster happened almost 50 years ago. An entire generation has grown up without experiencing it. Younger people don't remember. The urgency has faded, but the geology hasn't changed. The Cotabato Trench is still there, still building pressure still capable of generating another magnitude 8.0 earthquake. Fivolx has issued warnings. They've mapped vulnerable areas. They've tried to implement evacuation plans and conduct tsunami drills. But resources are limited, and Mindanao's coastal communities are spread across hundreds of miles of shoreline. If the Cotabato Trench ruptures again, the Philippines will face another catastrophe. And unlike 1976, the world will be watching in real time, on social media, on news channels, on smartphones streaming live footage of the disaster. The question isn't if it will happen, it's when. The Cotabato Trench is a subduction zone that has already killed 8,000 people in living memory. Geological evidence shows it ruptures every 50 to 100 years. It's been 49 years since the last major event. Millions live along Mindanao's coast. Tsunami warning systems exist, but preparedness is low. Coastal development continues, and public awareness is dangerously inadequate. The 1976 Moro Gulf tsunami is not ancient history. It's a preview of what's coming. 
What should Mindanao's coastal communities do to prepare? Let me know in the comments. And if you want more videos about deep sea threats in the Philippines, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because sometimes the deadliest threat is the one we've already forgotten.